Hi all. In this video we're going to look at one particular feature of the ocean system which is the depth cache. So what is the depth cache? Basically if you look around in this little bay area in this uh, example scene you see that there's some change of color of the ocean. Uh, you can see that there's some foam tracking along the shoreline. Uh, you also notice that the waves um, get much gentler so they're attenuated by uh, the water depth, whereas I'm larger in the open water. Uh, and uh, yeah, all these features are driven by the depth cache, uh, which has the information about what the water depth is, and that drives these features. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to actually set up this depth cache. Um, but first, I'll show you where that cache is. In this scene, it's under the island game object, um, and it's this guy here. So if you were to actually disable that guy and rerun, then we can see the result without a depth cache, and that's what it looks like. So we have basically open ocean everywhere, which is uh, not the effect that we want. Uh, so yeah, now we're going to go ahead and actually set up a depth cache from scratch. I'll keep that one around, um, but I'll turn it off for now. Uh, so a depth cache uh, needs to be a new game object. I would put the game object at, uh, I'll start by putting it at the origin, but I would put it at the height of the sea level. So the sea level height is whatever uh, Y value the ocean is set to, um, and that's the average water height. Uh, and there's just a couple of um, complicated reasons why it's good practice to uh, set that depth cache to be the ocean height. Uh, and I'm going to give it a name, I'll just call it depth cache. Uh, and then um, I'm going to give it the ocean depth cache component. So I've got a cache placed in the scene. Uh, the next step would be to set the scale of the cache, so the size. Uh, so I can do that with the X and Z scale factors here. Uh, I'll make those much bigger, like let's try 250 by 250 uh, and now I can see these gizmos are visible uh, provided that I have the gizmo enabled in the menu but I do so uh, there's a couple of elements that we see on the screen this white outline is showing the extents horizontal extents of the depth cache and then this translucent plane above here that is actually the cutoff height for anything going into the cache so that can be useful um, and it's configured using this max terrain height uh, and it defines basically I can reduce that now and say 50 and anything that's more than 50 meters above uh, the position of this cache will be cut off it'll be clipped by that plane that can be very useful to exclude um, various things from the cache so the next thing I'll configure are the layer names which specify which things to render into the cache so if I select the island here, I can see that the layer is set to terrain. So if I go back to my cache, that's the actual thing that I want to render into the cache. So I can say render one layer uh, and just render the terrain. So that will mean any other objects in the scene that aren't in the terrain layer won't um, render their heights into this cache, only the island will. So with that, um, we might be good to actually run it and see what we get. So around the viewer, we do indeed get the, uh, the water heights accurately represented from that cache. Uh, but we see a bit of an odd effect here where there's a bit of a sharp line. And we're actually at the extent of the cache here. So we didn't make the cache very big. And effectively what we have is a big cliff or a big drop off in the sea floor um, height. So the, we're basically seeing big waves that are hitting the cache and suddenly getting attenuated here in this kind of odd way. Uh, so let's stop and um, check that. So yeah, we can see that the boundary of the uh, the depth cache here, it only takes a little bit of the seabed. And the reason why we've uh, extruded the edges down so far is because uh, it take, it the water needs to be quite deep uh, to not attenuate the wave. So we use a physical formula here um, to 
for the effect of the sea floor bed on the waves so we need quite deep water for those very large long uh, waves to exist uh, so we're simply just going to extend out uh, the range of the cache so anything that would cover the terrain is fine um, to a pretty good level uh, I think that should do it I think 512 by 512 that's the resolution of uh, the baked depths that it bakes into the cache I think that's quite high I think we can probably get away with 256 by 256 uh, but yeah something like that should work well and yeah there we see that we have our shallow water depths um, but we don't have this disturbing artifact where uh, we get the sudden drop off um, where the depth cache starts so that's everything we wanted to cover with the depth cache and um, I hope this helps to get it set up and to yeah get things running in your scene thanks for watching bye